Image. Variety of maps, United States, zooming into Colorado and then the CSDB campus. Series of images from previous history videos, Jonathan Kennedy and General William Jackson Palmer, Old Main, School for the Blind, School Fire. 100 years after the establishment of CSDB, the enrollment averaged 350 students. In 1974, CSDB celebrated its centennial and then looked to the future. The CSDB logo appears. Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind, Excellence in Service, established 1874. Title, CSDB through the years, 1971 to present. Title, CSDB Centennial, 1874 to 1974. Two photographs, one of the administration, Gottlieb, and Adams buildings, the second of three student bakers decorating a three-tiered centennial cake. Title, Tim Milstad, Class of 1978. Tim is seated, communicating in sign language. Photograph, Gary Washington, Class of 1973. Gary Washington, his name sign is a G up here, not like the commonly known sign for Washington. Graduated from here in 73. I was a student here at that time and I watched him play high school football and basketball and track and he was just the best. I mean, he was truly the best athlete this school's ever seen. Up until the 1970s, the people had never come out to see an athlete like they did for Gary. They came to watch him play and the deaf community, they loved him. They loved to watch him play. And he just got better and better and better and even CU wanted him to go play for them. Now in track, all the way through high school, freshman to senior year, he never lost a single race. The 100, 200, 400, now this is 1A. In 2A and 3A competitions, he might have lost a couple here and there, but by and large, it was nothing but first place finishes. Three photographs, Gary holding a football, running on the track, playing football. In 73, this was Gary's senior year, Nixon was president, and the top student athletes were chosen from each, from each division. At this time, there were only three divisions. There were 3A, 2A, and 1A. But the top student athletes were chosen, and they invited, they picked Gary and they gave him an award, uh, the Steinmark Award. And this was a huge honor. And this was, this was really the highest honor a high school athlete could receive. Photograph, Gary and three others with President Nixon. President Nixon even invited them. They, they got to go, actually go to the White House and meet President Nixon. So they went, they went with his coach, Joe Cisneros, and they were there you know, with an interpreter and he was the coach and the interpreter there, and they were, they were talking back and forth, and, then, and Nixon shook his hand and jokingly asked him if he wanted to play for the Washington Redskins. Title, 1973 Deaf Olympics, three gold medals and silver medal, Malmo, Sweden. Photograph, Gary amongst a large group of other Deaf Olympic athletes in track suits. Scrolling through names of superintendents and script writing, changing to print, Robert T. Dawson, July 1974 to June 1982. In 1974, Robert Dawson became the school superintendent and the local chapter of the Telephone Pioneers of America built a guided running track for students who were blind. Aerial view of track. Soon thereafter, the Pikes Peak overpass was constructed to allow students unobstructed access to the school's athletic fields across Pikes Peak Avenue. Two photographs, Pikes Peak overpass under construction, overpass completed. Video and photo montage of CSDB football team. Newspaper clipping, titled DMB captures first state title. The CSDB football team won the eight-man state championship. Tim seated with two other men all communicating in sign language. I came here in 1965 as a young child, my first year, same as, same as Ralph. Don, and really from, from that time up until we graduated, we, it was the same people, we knew each other, we were like siblings. And that's what made that 77 team so special. Title, Ralph Ariano, class of 1978. But really we all worked really well together as a team. It was great. I think our team was the best we've ever had. Through that whole season, I think that, I think we were really fortunate that we were able to handle the pressure that we were under from beginning to end. Uh, you know, the first few games were tough. We, we beat Wiley, and then we played Simla, and that was an intense game. It was at Simla, but we did beat them. Title, Don Allsbaugh, class of 1979. As far as rivals go, I would say historically, throughout the years, the Simla game was evenly matched. So at that time, we went to the state championship and really it was right after Thanksgiving week. In the days leading up to the game, we were a bit apprehensive. We had full faith in our team, but the weather was a bit of an issue. Those winds were up to 60 miles an hour, and we knew that we had a good running game, not much of a passing attack, 
but we knew that that running game would give us a chance. So even though we kept our eyes on the windows watching that weather, we still had confidence in ourselves. And the team, as we walked over the bridge to the football field, we came across the top and we could see the entire crowd and the atmosphere was just electric with everybody signing and there were alumni and my parents and their friends and the place was just going crazy. Beginning of the first quarter, we received the kickoff and it wasn't but one or two plays till we fumbled the ball, the other team recovers. We were shocked. Just like that, we were down eight nothing. Newspaper photograph caption heading for touchdown. They were swarming Merle all over him all game. So we decided we're not gonna follow what the coach tells us. So we audible to a quarterback sneak, took it up the middle for 60 yards for a touchdown. Video of C's to be playing Simla. I'll never forget. 20, 20 to, 16. to 16. Newspaper clipping listing scores of CSTB and their opponents, noting a total of 442 points for CSTB and 180 points for their opponents. Photograph zooms in on Tim, Ralph, and Don holding a black and white photo of the football team holding a banner stating Class A Eight Man State Champions 1977. Photograph of gold, silver, and bronze medal winners, title Walter Von Felt Class of 1968 World Games for the Deaf, silver medal. CSDB has had many successful wrestlers over the years. In the late 60s, after wrestling for CSDB, Walter Von Felt placed second in the freestyle wrestling competition at the World Games for the Deaf. Series of photographs of student athletes mentioned. Three students from the School for the Deaf won state championships in wrestling. Marl Macada won his first, Bernie Atencio is second, and a third state title for Jesus Contreras. Bernie and Jesus are listed in the top 25 wrestling career records ever for Colorado between 1974 and 1977. Scrolling list of names. Gordon L. Kaufman, July 1982 to June 1990. Marilyn Jaitley, July 1990 to June 2004. Between 1982 and 2004, the school had two superintendents, Gordon Kaufman and Marilyn Jaitley. Four photographs, the gymnasium under construction and tennis courts. In 1984, the Hubert Work Gymnasium was renovated with the addition of the Weiner Galuzzo Multipurpose Facility, which included a two-lane bowling alley, two outdoor tennis courts, and the Bulldog Activity Center. Video of students in gym playing goalball. Goalball originated in 1946, later becoming a Paralympic sport. CSDB formed competitive teams in the mid-90s. Title, Lori Hall, class of 1980. Lori is seated against a black background. Goalball is a sport for the blind. It was um, developed in World War II for the blind vets. Um, it's played on a gym floor. You have a center and two wings. Uh, everybody's blindfolded and you have a ball that's a little bigger than a basketball and it has uh, a bell inside of it. And you take the ball and you roll it like a bowling ball. And the object is to get it past the other team into a goal. It was important to start goalball at CSDB because I felt like, as a person with a visual impairment, my sports was not fair. So goalball gave everybody an even playing field. Um, it gave students at CSDB their own sport for the blind that they could excel in, that they, they could go as far as they wanted to with it. And along my way, I ended up becoming an elite player. And so I thought, hmm, I'll get this developed and we'll start and get some of the kids playing it. Three photographs of Lori with students. Goalball team, team in a huddle, players on the court. So I started having kids come and we just kind of played. And I thought, hmm, this could go even further. So then I thought, well, how do I get other teams to come in and play with the kids? So I started speaking at different organizations and going to public schools and working with their PE classes and doing that type of thing. I thought, well, I'm gonna have a homecoming tournament. Then that way, the, the School for the Blind will have a more, have something that's special for them at homecoming. And so then I just, it, started inviting other teams um, from Schools for the Blind around the United States. External photographs of dorms. Beginning in 2000, Ritter and Brown Halls were remodeled with ADA compliant living units and apartments for students. The new dormitories included tactile artwork and upgraded technology. In 2002, CSDB started competing in the Academic Bowl. Academic Bowl logo, Gallaudet University, 2002-2003. Title, Anthony Thomas, class of 2004. Title, Austin Belich, class of 2006. Anthony and Austin seated, signing with one another. So the first time was in 2002. Um, I was a sophomore 
and we had two sophomores and one senior on the team. The three of us flew out and it was the first time for us, we met many deaf individuals there. And it was really cool where we met many different deaf individuals from different states that year. Photo two staff for students. In 2003, CSTB hosted the West Regional Academic Bowl competition. CSTB placed second, qualifying for the national competition at Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C. At 2003 Nationals, CSTB placed fourth. When we got back, people had raised their expectations. You know, next year we had to be even better. Photograph team in Hawaiian outfits. In 2004, CSTB won the regional competition in the West Regional. CSTB went to the national competition with an undefeated record. CSTB won the national championship, beating John Hersey High School. CSTB record in 2004, 19-1. One loss in national preliminary. So Really, to be honest, it was a really close match in winning. Um, yeah, we were behind. It was the third round where we finally won when we added up the total. So then the third round was the World Capitals. And I remember checking that list and filling it out and, you know, feeling fairly confident I got most of them right. When the judges totaled up the score and announced we won the championship, I was shocked. And it was my senior year, too. It's interesting because 2004, that year, just wow. The Four of us were strong competitors. We were very well-rounded. Photograph team with trophies and certificates. When we went to nationals, the four of us, it was more of a competition between ourselves. So yeah, we were competing against the other teams. They were there, but it was more about trying to outdo each other. That year was really a healthy competition. It was a positive thing. And 2004, boy, that was our best year. Scrolling list of names. Between July 2004 and June 2019, Carol A. Hilty was superintendent. Photograph Gottlieb Building under construction, Gottlieb completed. The Gottlieb Building, the school building that was rebuilt in 1952 after the fire devastated the original building, was renovated in 2011. The renovation modernized the building. Many historic features were kept and a new extension was added. Title, Tasha Daniels, class of 2000. Tasha is inside Gottlieb, communicating in sign language. This is the Gottlieb building. There was a fire in 1952 that devastated the building. It was reconstructed and then in 2011 remodeled with an extension. The walls and windows were kept specifically to preserve its history. Panning stone walls and windows inside Gottlieb. Panning common area with students. This space is so great because it's open, deaf people can see each other signing, and they have a round seating area in the center. Title, Santiba Johnson, class of 1990. Santiba is in the library communicating in sign language. Here we are in the new media center. We hold classes here. There are several computers, variety of different books, and even more upstairs. Video montage of staff and students using technology. Classrooms were equipped with automatic and interactive components, including a large format LED screen with additional hardware so it can be used as an interactive screen for teaching and learning activities. A touch panel controls the screen, lights, window shades, and technology for distance learning. In 2015, every student received either a laptop or a tablet computer for use in the classroom. Title, Alicia Bates, Class of 2022. Alicia is seated in a dimly lit classroom. In 2013, the Adams Building, the facility for the School for the Blind program, was updated with a unique multi-track lighting system. Teachers can use software to adjust the brightness and color temperature of individual rows of lights in the classroom. Staff adjusting settings on laptop. After they evaluate our lighting needs, based on eye condition and visual comfort, track lighting changing shades, they program the LED lights. Students with similar lighting needs can sit together for example, I prefer brighter lights. Students working under differing lighting. And students with albinism in my class prefer less intense colored lights. Having the right lighting makes the classroom more comfortable so that it's easier to learn. Aerial view panning Jones Hall and Palmer Hall. Jones and Palmer were renovated in 2018 and 2019. Scrolling list of names. Nancy E. Benham became superintendent July 2019. Aerial view panning across campus. Series of photographs from oldest to most recent. Students on CSUB campus and in classrooms. Since 1874, the Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind has educated and been a home away from home for thousands of students. As education has progressed over the years, CSUB services for students on campus and throughout Colorado have expanded and evolved. CSUB continues to be a statewide resource for students, families, districts, and professionals. CSDB embraces its past while looking forward to what the future will bring.
title, CSDB Through the Years, 1971 to Present. The CSDB logo, Excellence in Service, Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind, established 1874. Historical storytellers, Donald Alsbach, class of 1979, Ralph Ariano, class of 1978, Austin Belich, class of 2006, Alicia Bates, class of 2022, Tasha Daniels, class of 2000, Tim Elstad, class of 1978, Lori Hall, class of 1980, Santiba Johnson, class of 1990, Anthony Thomas, class of 2004, Jim Olson, narrator, video production, Austin Belich, class of 2006, Deb Branch, Sean Levier, Elena McDevitt, Diane Taylor, ASL consultation, Dana Baldiviez, Elena McDevitt, Captioning, Debbie Habercorn. Audio description, Jamie Cusimano, Jim Olson. Sign language interpretation, Joseph Bonjour, Joshua Flannery, Ryan March, Corey McCormick, Laura Ramos. CSDB Historical Preservation Alumni and Volunteers, Catherine Alsba, Class of 1977, Donald Alsba, Class of 1979, Ralph Ariano, Class of 1978, Kevin Brown, Diane Taylor, Tim Elstead, Class of 1978, Kathy Gonzalez, Debbie Habercorn, Sue Pfaffenhauser, Jerry Schofield, class of 1983, John Veen, Walter Von Felt, class of 1968, Kim Weglin. Director of Outreach, Dr. Laura Douglas, Superintendent, Dr. Nancy Benham.